innovators of our generation. Hi, I'm Terry Hulk. Dedicated to exceptional science. Hi, I'm Jerry Olson. Advancing the technologies of tomorrow. Hi, I'm Dave Gallagher. I'm Mark Serez. Hi, my name is Ron Weaver. And creating a better future for our planet. Hi, I am Claire Huang. Collabs honors the outstanding achievements of these researchers and their impact on our world. This is our latest generation of a drop sun. The drop sun technology is taking atmospheric science to places it has never gone before, in part because of the talent at the National Center for Atmospheric Research. We're measuring very precisely with tremendous resolution the atmosphere anywhere from 30,000 feet up to 100,000 feet depending upon what our platform is that we're deploying the drop suns from. Terry Hoke leads a team of engineers and scientists at UCAR NCAR. Together, they've developed and advanced the weather instrument known as a drop sound. It has a temperature sensor here. We have two humidity sensors right here. There's a pressure sensor here on the, on the back side. We have a lot of electronics that makes measurements from these uh, sensors, and we have a transmitter here that sends all the data back to the balloon or to the aircraft, and then we have a GPS uh, system right up here. You see those red balloons? Each one of them represents one drop sound. All stations, NASA G, system arm, system arm. The drop sounds are deployed by aircraft or high pressure balloon to provide reliable, real time information on the state of our atmosphere. The drop sounds are remotely operated to achieve unprecedented access across the globe. During the last uh, 15 years, uh, NOAA dropped. Uh, about 20,000 sounds into the hurricane to help the hurricane forecasting. The drop sounds measure pressure, humidity, temperature, wind speed, and wind direction. That information is improving hurricane tracking and intensity predictions, winter storm forecasting, validation of satellite data, climate change, and ozone research. We got the best data, and when we look at the data, we are so excited to say, Oh, we can say so much we have never said before. Our real product that we're doing isn't the drops on, isn't our instruments, but is to provide a high quality data set to the scientists such that they have a very good understanding to know precisely what is taking place uh, in the atmosphere. Our basic mission in the, in the group is to develop very high efficiency solar cells. Jerry Olson is a pioneer in the field of solar power. The inventiveness of his group at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory is transforming the way we capture the sun's energy. There was a whole group of researchers out there that were going in one direction and uh, we came up with an idea about how to go in another direction. Okay, and had the luxury of following our noses, so to speak, uh, for a few years until we got to the point where we knew we had a real winner, that it was going to be a solar cell that could revolutionize the industry. And it did. Most solar cells are made up of just one material like silicon, but higher efficiencies could be achieved with the multi-junction cell. And that solar cell was basically a, a gallium phosphide top cell uh, grown monolithically on a gallium arsenide bottom cell. In a multi-junction solar cell, we try to capture more of the solar spectrum more efficiently by combining advantageous properties of one material with the advantageous properties of another material. The multi-junction solar cell is reaching record-breaking efficiencies of greater than 40%. Add a lens to focus sunlight on the cell and you have a highly efficient, cost-effective system. The 30 megawatt concentrating photovoltaic or CPV field in the San Luis Valley is the biggest in Colorado, one of the largest in the world, and at the heart of it is the multi-junction solar cell. I have a couple of grandkids that I would like to see uh, grow up in a, in a world that has a, a stable supply of clean energy. And I think actually that CPV is one of those components of renewable energy that's going to be able to supply a large amount of that clean, secure power for not only the U.S., but also for the world. We are 
are now part of the solution. We hear sometimes that, oh, these green technologies, they can't work, they can't make a difference. Well, we're proving them wrong. Going green is already paying off for the National Snow and Ice Data Center, which is part of the Cooperative Institute on Research in Environmental Sciences at CU Boulder. It now takes less energy to cool this whole data center down than it does to run your car's air conditioner. Very pleased. This is, this is very exciting. And our NASA sponsors are very excited about this project, too. The National Snow and Ice Data Center specializes in research on the planet's frozen regions. A few years back, the group here saw an opportunity to better honor that mission by drastically reducing the energy consumption of its servers. We are studying the poles, we're studying the climate, and yet the tools these boxes were using to study those things generated a lot of heat and a lot of CO2 and consumed enormous amount of energy. As a data center, it needs cooling 24-7, 365. And uh, with a traditional air conditioner, you're going to be running your air conditioner you know, in the middle of winter. And you really don't need to do that. These Coolerado units now provide 100% fresh, cool air to the space. The indirect evaporative cooling systems are uniquely positioned inside to vent heat from the data center directly outside and save energy. All of our computers are now surrounded, sealed up, so that all the hot oil, all the hot air is goes out and is ducted out the back. The cold air, which is where I'm standing, gets sucked into the front of these machines, uh, is, cools the hardware down, and then the air is ejected outside. So rather than an air conditioning system trying to chill that air, we simply get rid of it. The Green Data Center is saving roughly $25,000 a year in electricity costs. Energy use is down about 95%. It still meets all of the manufacturer's specifications, and this is just phase one. Phase two is to put this solar array up on the roof. Uh, it's going to really further reduce our carbon footprint. So in some ways, the fun's just started. We are very proud of the fact that we're now a green data center. We're energy efficient. We're doing our own small part to try to reduce that energy impact. True to their nature, the team here is collecting information on the data center performance to study and hopefully inspire others to go green. This is worth doing. We can use this as an example of what others can do in Colorado and beyond. I was born and raised in Taiwan. While I was working in a virology lab in Taiwan back in 1987, there was a big dengue outbreak happening in the southern Taiwan. And ever since, Taiwan has the dengue outbreak almost every year. Seeing firsthand the devastating consequences of the dengue virus inspired Dr. Claire Wong to try to make a difference. Dengue is spread by mosquitoes in tropical and subtropical regions. There are an estimated 100 million cases a year, thousands deadly. A vaccine would be the best prevention. There are several dengue vaccines now under development in the pipeline, and uh, dengue, uh, CDC's vaccine is one of the top five or seven in the world. Dr. Wong's team at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention developed a vaccine, one that could safely neutralize all four types of the dengue virus. Dr. Wong and, and Dr. Kinney and the, and the group here at, at CDC did a brilliant job of re-engineering these viruses. It's, it's really spectacular molecular genetics. The CDC's commercial partner in Virigen is now completing phase one of clinical testing. The results so far are promising. It's really thrilling to, to think that we can bring this technology from the bench on into the clinic and hopefully in a matter of, of several years um, into the marketplace as well and prevent this devastating disease. They have the same goal as us to provide a safe, affordable vaccine to not only the developed country for the travelers to the endemic area, but also be affordable to the developing country people who live there and need it most. If successful, this dengue vaccine could protect billions of lives, a prospect that inspires researchers at the CDC. It has been my lifelong passion that I can do something to help people that I know the most. It's in the country where I was growing up.
Labs also recognizes these distinguished finalists. The U.S. Forest Service Rocky Mountain Research Station for quantifying the vulnerability of our water system. The National Institute of Standards and Technology for its advanced distillation curve metrology. And the National Renewable Energy Laboratory for its large volume battery calorimeter. I think this is just a great honor to see uh, the work recognized by so many of us that have uh, just dedicated our careers uh, to this type of technology and supporting this type of uh, science. These are the visionaries of Colorado's research centers. Colorado's a great place and we have a lot of really good scientists in this state. And, uh, uh, thank you very much. Their work is improving our world, saving lives, creating a more secure, sustainable energy future. These are the recipients of the 2011 CoLabs Governor's Award for High Impact Research. CoLabs, I'd really like to thank for uh, seeing the value of what we've done. And uh, it's a great honor. 